about network analysis, right? So the whole objective that I have for this talk is to really <coughs> make, uh, make us aware of what network analysis is, right? Uh, because what, what I've seen is that uh, network analysis, though being a very versatile uh, conceptual framework, uh, we can apply it in multiple areas, has not uh, been applied that much, right? Um, and, and the point is that uh, it, this particular uh, technique has been there for quite some time. That there has been some cool work that's already done. So uh, let me begin with, <coughs> you know, w w how I'm going to spend like next 30, 35, 40 minutes, right? So we'll talk about a little bit about the history of uh, network analysis. Some very cool examples, which uh, uh, which I thought uh, is very very different from the tech thing that you would be, uh, you know, going through right now, right? Uh, and then probably talk about uh, two or three wor you know, work examples that I and my team had done. Of course, uh, we'll, uh, I'll not reference my employer. <laughs> so, uh, so that's one. And then we talk about some core concepts, right? Because we use it every, every time, everywhere, but we do not realize it, right? And can, can anyone tell me as to um, what am I referring to, right? Anyone? That's one. And which is, which is the app that you use the most? I mean, apart from Facebook. <laughs> Google Maps, right? So this morning, uh, while I was uh, driving to uh, Kemka Auditorium, right? Uh, what did I do? Simply, I, I'll uh, switch on the Google Maps, right? So. Very surprisingly, Google Maps, what, what does it really do? I mean, uh, if you see at the core of the architecture or, or, or the core concept, uh, how it works on uh, in an efficient or short path, is actually utilize the network analysis, right? And uh, that's really powerful because, uh, you know, we, we, we use it everywhere, right? Uh, say, uh, you know, another thing that, uh, you know, uh, that has its, uh, advantage in terms of uh, network analysis or, or the graph analysis, if you will, is the so uh, you know the social networks, right? So we talked about Facebook, we have Twitter, right? So wherever there are interactions, right? So wherever there are interactions, you will have network analysis, right? So le let's start with that. Now, <clears throat> before I move on uh, on on to the core concepts. Two very interesting things, uh, two very interesting papers. Now, uh, why I'd refer to papers? Because uh, I like reading quite a bit, right? And one of the seminal work uh, which r really leveraged uh, network analysis in, in a very, very different setting is the 9-11 uh, analysis, right? And uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, some of you would be aware of that. And Valdis E. Krebs paper uh, that, that's considered to be a seminal, uh, you know, in terms of trying to understand the terror network. So particularly after 9-11, you know, how do we identify uh, who was the linchpin, right? So that's, that's very interesting because when, when you go through the paper, and I am not talking about, uh, you know, two or three, three years back, that was just after the incident in 2002, that paper was published. And at that point in time, we did not have as many softwares as we have right now. Or we do not have uh, computational abilities that, that we have right now. So, <clears throat> however, uh, what happened, you know, if you see that paper, the, the core concepts again remain the same. The objective of the whole paper is trying to understand how would, how would these people have interacted, why they were under the radar, right, despite so much of surveillance. How 19 of the hijackers, you know, how how uh, how they were interacting with each other, uh, each other, and then how none of them knew that they were like 19 in number, right? So very interesting, very fascinating paper. Uh, another one, uh, again very very different areas. Uh, you, you can refer to the work of Tim Tangarilandi. So what he did or what he does essentially is, you know, trying to understand 
the you know evolution of stories and folklore using social network analysis so uh, it, it's a very interesting mix of three things right uh, one is gis another one is uh, you know the whole network analysis and the uh, discrete mathematics part of it right <clears throat> so we would uh, you know so the general notion is that when we talk about uh, social science right it's uh, you know there's nothing maths in it right so uh, from that standpoint if you see it's a very very interesting uh, work that uh, you know tim uh, tim and his team has done in fact they they, they have uh, an annual conference called computational folk, uh, folklorist something like that um, so the, these were the two three uh, examples that uh, that had fascinated uh, me quite a bit now because of that reason what what we uh, try to do in our work right because uh, what i do what i and my team do is we try and use data science and artificial intelligence to research and tell something very very different about a particular industry or across industry right so we do not focus on particular companies <coughs> and again um, since uh, i am more a open so a source at heart so we we'll, uh, we use open data right and open technologies so what we are trying to uh, trying to understand was how the innovation right how the innovation gets diffused right so is there you know is there a pathway for innovation right and if there is a pathway for innovation how how does it look like and can we really predict where that innovation is going to die down or uh, is there a half life or some uh, some sort of a thing that's there wherein you know it keeps on diffusing and then it's uh, you know it dies down right so if you were to do that how are you going to start take a guess i mean all of us are you know machine learning developers right i mean data scientists so how do you where would you start right so <clears throat> so i think the first thing that uh, uh, that you are going to do is trying to find the interactions right that's the most important because you would want to understand the path which is being traced okay so where would you get the data from again because this data is going to be uh, you know uh, in open source in public so what we did was uh, we were focused again towards uh, uh, america uh, you know north america so what we did was we t uh, we took the us pto data us patent and trade organization data so whatever all patents were granted so we took all of that data right which is around uh, at at this point in time it's around 3 terabytes of data right so so what we have done really is as a team is actually built a parser which will go to the us pto website and if there is any new patent which is granted it gets into our system right so it's it's like that so the whole process is automated and believe me i mean it's very easy to say that in two three sentences but it was very hard for us to really get all of that architecture uh, architecture done <coughs> so once you've done that right so what what you really have you have the uh, you know uh, the documentation of patents which uh, you know which are granted now right? now how are you going to use that for innovation diffusion isn't it so our assumption was that whenever you are granted a pa patent why would you be granted a patent because that is supposed to be quote and quote innovation because you you, uh, you are bringing a, a new technology or a new way to work or you uh, you know improve upon something right so that's why you granted uh, a patent otherwise you would not be granted a patent because although you would file it but the patent uh, office would say that okay you know uh, this is not you know nothing which is unique now having said that what are uh, you know what are you supposed to be providing to the patent office you know so there you would have to provide as to where all is the previous work that you referenced referenced in because you would not be working in isolation you will be taking some influence some inspiration from some other technology you will try to you would be trying to improve it or you you would try to improve either the design or the process or the mechanism or the algorithm right uh, in our world uh, you would you would want to tweak or change the whole algorithm right Dep you know basing on the work of other people right 
So then, what you would have to do typically is, you will have to cite, right? So, <coughs> that citation we took as the interaction, right? So, consider that there was an existing technology which was there or, or, or a patent was there. Now, it gets cited, right? Then, this patent again gets cited, right? So, likewise, what you are going to end up with? You are going to end up with a network, right? And then you have a very huge network of innovation that's happening. Now it's up to you as to how do you want to uh, understand, analyze the whole thing. The <clears throat> some numbers there, uh, the, uh, you know, as, as I said earlier, it was around three terabytes of text, images, and other things. Uh, the citation that I'm referring to is around uh, 20 million citations. You know, uh, when I'm saying 20 million citations, it, it'll be like, you know, uh, we'll come into uh, come in a minute in terms of concepts. But basically, how the pathway is, right? So one from another. <coughs> so once once we had done that, we uh, we try to understand again is who uh, you know which technology because when when you go to the patent data patent data again has its own set of classifications so it does not really uh, all of you might be working in different uh, you know industries so it does not really allude to a particular uh, industry sort of a classification right so let's say whether it is tmt or this or that so it's not going to classify according to that so it has its own classification so now if you were not uh, if you were not using a particular company right because our work would not really uh, we will not focus on a particular um, company right so then we have to focus on particular technology and a particular subspace right so the second step was which technologies uh, you know uh, which subspace do we really uh, first tackle to so that's when we collaborated with energy resource and industrial uh, group uh, of, of my team, right? <coughs> Wherein we said that, okay, what would be, uh, uh, you know, which companies or organizations would be a good proxy for your subspace, right? So that way what you're doing is you're trying to put this together into, uh, you know, into a subspace because again, uh, what's going to happen is if, if you're going to take the whole uh, patent data, right? You have different industries, you are not aware of it, and then you will not be able to tell something meaningful out of that, right? So that's why you will have to put, a, uh, put an industry lens to it, uh, basing on the vagaries of how the patent data is, right? So that, that was the second thing. Again, there you will, uh, you know, what you will have to do is, there is quite a bit, bit of strings which are there, you know, because when you get organization name, and those of you who really work with text data, uh, it has its own set, uh, sets of challenges, right? So you will have different so, uh, sort of strings or, or, or the, uh, you know, uh, types which will be there. So how do you reconcile all of that, right? So that's where we used fuzzy matching to try and understand uh, and then generalize whether this particular patent belongs to this, uh, you know, this particular company. Once we had done that and <clears throat> that itself again was a huge uh, sort of an effort. Once we had done that, we tried to understand which of the which of the technologies in this subspace. Again, going uh, going through the network analysis, which of uh, the technologies in this space is actually very very influential. One, what is the innovation index? Uh, so we created or we proposed an innovation index. Uh, I, uh, you know. At, you know, uh, I cannot really share the formula or, or, or the detailed methodology because, because of the proprietary constraints. But we built one and then we were able to say that, you know, this is the kind of innovation this particular technology has really spurred in. That's one. Second is, how long was the life of, you know, that innovation diffusion, right? So whether it was really long, let's say, so generally, you know, people would think that, uh, you know, it goes anywhere from, let's say, um, maybe six months, one year, going up to 2,000 years. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's not the case really. So there, you will have to apply metrics to try and understand 
what's the uh, length or duration of uh, innovation diffusion. So, <clears throat> and uh, you know, all of these ga gave us an uh, you know a good idea of that particular space. So, whether uh, in, you know energy resource and industrials, as a as an industry has more innovation uh, that's going on one, or is that some other area which is going on? Because uh, b because the, the traditional belief is that. <coughs> uh, you know, IT will have more innovation, right? Uh, as compared to, let's say, ERNI. So whether whether that assumption or hypothesis is really valid or not, right? So those uh, those are the things that you can do using graph analysis, right? And I think that that would have generated a little bit of an uh, you know curiosity in uh, you know in terms of how do we really uh, go for uh, graph analysis and what what uh, you know underlies a graph. Or a network, right? So I'll ch uh, I'm using graph and network interchangeably, right? <coughs> so uh, you know, let's start with very very small, very very basic thing. What is a network? How do you define a network? Simplest definition, and and we can go to our uh, you know seventh, eighth, ninth class, wherein we can talk about vertex, and we talk about line. So if you you know if uh, we know that I think we know graph analysis. It's as simple as that, right? So those of you who uh, would wa want to go uh, you know more into mathematical bit of it, so it uh, you know the core is again discrete mathematics, right? So if you'd be interested in that, you can go through that. Uh, however, those of us who would not want to bother us with discrete mathemat mathematics uh, bit of it, but would want to apply it. Uh, you know, uh, in the business problems, I think <coughs> we can uh, do that as well too. I mean, you will need to know a little bit of mathematics for sure, but not to that extent that it will uh, intimidate you. Right? Having said that, uh, the very simple definition of uh, network is you have vertex, right? Or uh, you know, there are different things people call uh, depending on which area they come from. So suffice it to say is you have vertex, you have edge. So that's the simplest thing that, that we have to keep in mind. Uh, vertex is again interchangeably be, be called nodes, right? So, <clears throat> and then other, other people might say something uh, very, very different. So vertex and node, right? Now, if you have vertex and node, and, and we have a single, you know, very, very simple network, wherein you have two vertex, right? And on, only one single uh, ed um, edge. Right? That, that's the simplest network that you have. And these two vertices would be called n vertex. Simple. Now, what can happen in theory is that you still have one vertex, right? And then you, you, can, you can have a loop towards it, right? So what if I started from ISB, came back to ISB, right? That in theory is a network, right? So, how do we, you know, uh, when, when we talk about the other metric of it, which, which I'll come in a minute, is called degree, right? So what is the degree of this particular vertex? And again, <coughs> not to intimidate anyone, but uh, very simple. Whatever are the incidents of a, you know, on a particular vertex, right? So, uh, you know, let's remove that incident word also. You know, how many ever lines are crossing through that vertex becomes your degree. Very, very simple definition. I mean, I don't think I can go, you know, much, you know, simpler than that. So, if you have, uh, you know, so that becomes very important. Again, if you see from a graph analysis standpoint, right, which of, which of the node is going to be very influential or very important? Because we'll... Uh, one of the business objectives always is that who are my influencers, right? Uh, there is there is a quite a bit of work that's done, uh, you know, uh, that's being done, and there's a concept called uh, you know um, social network potential, right? You have clouds of the world and other things. They they rely on this particular thing, right? So what's the degree of that particular node, right? 
So the more is the degree, the more important the node is. Right? So that is one of the measures of another thing called importance of a node. Right? So uh, we have the simplest assumption that the more <coughs> uh, connections a particular vertex has or a node has, it becomes more important. However, there are three, four different measures of it, right? Uh, you know, depending on what's your business objective, how refined you want it, want it to be. But suffice it to say again is that what it all does is give you a relative importance of different vertices and nodes. So essentially, if you have a network of people or, or, or network of entities, you would want to first, I mean, there, there, there can be three, four objectives that you would want to uh, go for. One is which of these you know, people or entities are very, very important to me, right? So for that, what you're going to do is you, you are going to measure the centrality of it. That's one. Second thing is, and, and in the centrality uh, measurement, you have, an, uh, you know, again, three, four different flavors. One we talked about just now, degree centrality. Then the, uh, there is another one called betweenness uh, centrality, right? Closeness centrality, card centrality, and then uh, the last one is eigenvector or page rank centrality, right? So you will have to see uh, which of these are going to be, you know, uh, as, as, as you're doing your research or, you know, developing your product, which of these are going to be uh, fitting your business objective, right? That's one. Second thing is, in this particular network, right? Are there, uh, you know, there is a, a, another concept called clique, right? So are there clique uh, formations which are there? Now, what are cliques? Cliques are, uh, you know, our close friends, which always move with, with us together, right? So that's called clique formation. So uh, one of the work that, that we were doing, uh, again, in terms of research, is trying to understand the whole uh, phenomena of presence of women in company boards, right? So uh, in some uh, countries, it's, uh, you know, it's by law, it's mandatory that you have some seats for women uh, in the board. Now we wanted to understand whether again there is a clique phenomena that's coming in, meaning same set of women are being represented in different boards just to bypass the regulation, right? So that again is very interesting uh, thing to understand and C. Uh, the third thing is whether <coughs> there, are, uh, you know, there are isolated nodes, right? So uh, that again, uh, you know, identifying that is very, you know, it's going to be super easy because the degree is going to be only one, right? Those those would be uh, those nodes or those vertices are going to have degree uh, of one, right? <coughs> Now, uh, the last thing uh, in terms of, uh, you know, concept, right, because the time is running out, uh, is, you know, how do you define the network, right? So, what's the characteristic of that network? So, th uh, there is something called degree distribution, right, that, that, we, uh, that we check, right? So, we are, you know, compute the degrees of each of the nodes, and then there is, uh, you know, then, uh, then we try and understand whether there is a power law distribution or what sort of a distribution fit it is, right? So that is more to understand the uh, characteristics of that particular thing, right? The last one uh, is the transitivity or the clustering, right? So are there, so clique and clusters are a little different. <coughs> so essentially, uh, whether there is a natural, uh, you know, uh, cluster which, which is being formed, right? And uh, whether, whether, whether there is enough transitivity in this whole thing, right? So, if, if you see all of these, I, I, I don't think any of these would require uh, any intimidating mathematical, uh, you know, uh, formulas, right? If you're interested, of course, uh, I would always encourage all of us to really refer to that. Very interesting. Again, not uh, not very difficult. Mathematics are uh, you know behind that, right? Uh, but uh, it really uh, you know 
gives us a way in which we see our data in a very, very different light. Right? Now, the last three, four minutes we'll talk about, okay, all this is fine, graph analysis is all good, how do we do it? Right? So, uh, my bet is going to be, again, uh, which software uh, you should be going through is again dependent on what you would want to do. Right? If it is more for uh, network visualization, right? and if you have your own custom requirements, the best way to go through it uh, is actually using D3 and creating from scratch. Now, if you are not doing that, right? and if you are more like, I, I, you know, I'm trying to understand it and I, I would want to interact with, uh, it with, you know, with more. So again, the decision criteria is going to be uh, whether you would want to spend money on that, right? Or you would want to use an open source tool. Uh, all of these are available. There are around 30, 35 uh, different uh, softwares, uh, tools, which are available. So <coughs> my pick is going to be Gephi, right? If, if you are not into... Uh, you know, if, if you are not that kind of a person who would really want to pro program, if you would want to program, then Network X is going to be the pick. Now, Network X uh, is, is there for quite some time. It's a Python mod module. Uh, those of you who, uh, who hate Python, <laughs> and I think none of you, but, um, and, and uh, you, you are more into R, R has a very, you know, very strong uh, ecosystem of network analysis, right? So you have ERM, GRM, uh, Berg, uh, you have StatNet, right? So uh, there are a plethora of uh, uh, libraries in R in which you can do that. <coughs> uh, now, uh, for those of us who would want to develop a product out of that, right? Because NetworkX, what happens is after 10,000 nodes, Right, uh, the performance becomes very slow, and and uh, and that that is uh, you know kind of given because the computations within uh, you know underlying the you know the discrete mathematics algorithm is a hard optimization problem, so it will take time. Now, how do you uh, how do we counter that? So there is another uh, plugin or uh, another module in Python which which was recently uh, not recently I mean three four years. It's called Network Kit. Right, so network kit is really uh, you know uh, is really the way to go if you would want to have let's say uh, nodes in millions, right? And it uh, it does that in not 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 even in uh, you know maybe minutes, right? So three four minutes because it's again based on uh, the philosophy of parallelization, right? How do we really uh, save time on uh, on all of that? So network kit uh, would be the uh, way to go. Now those of us who really would not want to go through any of these, right? And would want to play with Excel. So there is another plugin called Node Excel. Very interesting. So you can do that uh, in, in, in uh, Node Excel as well. Uh, my personal pick uh, out of all of these is going to be Network Kit. Uh, even if you do not have as many nodes uh, uh, in your data, because because of the fact that. They have really taken care of, I mean, uh, their design principle was really sound when, when, uh, when they have developed it. Uh, uh, they have plugged it in with NetworkX, so if your work is already in NetworkX, you can still uh, use NetworkKit and utilize, uh, utilize it, right? So, <coughs> uh, one last uh, thing from my side. Uh, uh, those of us who would want to use, uh, use it more for uh, academic purposes, again, uh, there is... Uh, Another software which is there, it's called Pajek, right? So, which was developed on uh, UCI Net. Uh, those of us who would not really want to use either Python or R, there is another thing called Jung, right? So, the the point I'm making here, concept is very you know uh, very simple, right? Uh, there are things that we can uh, understand from the data. It's a very different way of seeing through your data and, and uh, understanding and analyzing it. You have uh, softwares available both freely, I mean open source and uh, you know uh, paid softwares. So yeah, la last thing that I uh, forgot about is NetMiner is another uh, software, but again, NetMiner, uh, you will have to pay something, but 
All these are again open source software. So, last one thing. Uh, I, I would hope that at least some of you would start thinking on network analysis and utilizing it for your business uh, you know, problems. So, thanks much. Thanks for giving me time. <laughs>